and I have the honor of introducing the author tonight. Now, my idea of the very most perfect evening in the world is having dinner, sitting on the sofa next to this woman right here, and, and listening to her tell stories about her childhood and her family. How many of you have been a part of that? Lucky you, huh? <laughs> and part of the attraction of Sheila's stories to me is that she and I kind of sort of grew up around the same time, even though she's 45 years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> and when she talks about Guy King and Penny and yeah, Nellie Bell. Songbird. <laughs> Songbird, yeah. All right, give me some, throw some more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, as soon as the words come out of her are, are part of her story, something in me warms. And if she's describing what prejudice is like in a small town in the South, it hurts. I remember that. And I feel pain and it feels familiar. So if you grew up in the 50s or the 60s, which some of us did, or you were raised in the South, which a lot more of us did, are, or you felt love you couldn't have, you felt love you couldn't have, or you just like to laugh, okay? Now you're lucky enough to spend a couple of evenings on the couch with our dear friend Sheila because she's written a memoir called Deep in the Heart, and you can have her in your own home. And like many of us, Sheila, like many Southerners, I guess Northerners may be like this, but I know Southerners are. We have a deep and abiding love for our eccentric family, don't we? <laughs> we sure do. We hate them, we love them, but it's, they're there. They're there in our lives forever. And she describes it, that love, so particularly that I remember it, and you'll remember it, and everybody will remember it, those crazy people in our life. And by the time you finish this book, you're going to know all of her relatives, and they're colorful. <laughs> There's another mama, which I love, another mama. There's another one mama, and there's another mama. <laughs> there's dude, dude's great, and there's Sonny Man, all right? And then, let's see, Uncle Schlinky, he was the moonshine. Yeah, my great-granddad. Grandpa. Yeah, Grandpa, Grandpa Schlinky. Grandpa yeah. Schlinky. Yeah. And then there was some uncle that used to borrow money money from her when she was like five years old so he could buy liquor. But, you know, I don't know what book that was. <laughs> but it makes a great story. Yeah, I like it. Next book. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. And look, it's in there, I swear. <laughs> First one to find it gets 10 bucks. <laughs> and then, you know, you grow to love her mom, okay, Selma, who is constantly trying to keep this really bizarre group of people, you know, normal, but <laughs> it's not working out well for her. No. And then there's Daddy. And Daddy, God love him, he's keeping his head while all those about him are losing theirs. You're going to love the small town stories she tells about the barbershops, the revivals. Now, thank God we didn't have any of those in North Carolina, but I hear y'all had the ones we didn't have down here. <laughs> so the revivals, the smell of the barn, what it feels like to gallop across an open field on sport. Spot. Spot. Right. <laughs> Close. So creative the naming of her animals. <laughs> Just uh, a guess. Did, it, did he have spot? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then that tender, sweet, sweet first love she has for Tyna Beth. I hope she updates you about Tyna Beth. That was her dream role. And I'll let her tell you. So when Sheila waxes eloquent about a fried pie, you reach for the Crisco. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that real for you? Yeah. And descriptions in her book of the angst and yearning of a good girl finding out that she loved other good girls will break your heart. Okay, and it'll remind you of the time, those of you who have been there and done that, what it's like to love somebody that nobody that nobody allows you to love, and what that feels like when you're a good girl. A very large part of the appeal of Sheila Storrs is her humor. This lady can move me from a chuckle to a snort and gulp in about six minutes. <laughs> That's the truth. It is a snort and gulp. 
She has other talents. I don't know whether you know this beyond the fact that she's a great author, and those include. She can say the Lord's Prayer in Spanish. That's all she can say. And you may want her to do that. I give her a couple drinks, but she probably will do it. She sings like an angel. Many of you I know know that. And she can impersonate a security guard when you're doing things you shouldn't. <laughs> She makes the best peach ice cream in the entire world, so invite her over in the summer. And she inspires mimics. Has anybody ever heard her go, Beep? Hi. Danger. Danger. <laughs> Sheila goes by many names. Okay, there's Sheila Ray, Mama Daddy, Big Bob. Sheila's slow, but Sheila herself says that at heart, she's a cowboy. And I believe her, she truly is, because she drinks bourbon and ranch water. <laughs> she's heroic, she's decent, she's fair, and she's solid as a rock. And we all count on her for her good, sound advice. She's a cowboy with a heart of gold, who's giving and loving and true to everybody in this room. Everybody I know her that I know, that knows her, loves her deeply. And girlfriend, when she puts on that Stetson hat, <laughs> let's just say she ain't not responsible with what comes next between her and Miss Kitty. <laughs> I give you my favorite cowboy, my favorite author, my favorite person, Sheila. <laughs>